In Scarface, 1920, Al Capone, Stephanie St. Clair, Dean O'Bannon, and Arnold Rothstein fought for control of Chicago during the height of Prohibition. Well, it's now been three years. There's now some bloody business on the streets because new gangs want in on the action. They're seeking to put their hands and get a piece of the pie. It's time for more action, more business, more Scarface 1920, more bloody business. It's time to talk about some of the new gangs being added to the game. In this video, we're going to cover the gang of the Golden Oaks. We're going to see how Bessie and Rocco shake things up, bringing their own unique style, their own asymmetry, and their own gameplay to the game of Scarface 1920. Hey everybody, welcome off the show, Board Game Reviews. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to our wonderful tabletop gaming hobby. And this video is part of a video series looking at Bloody Business, the first large expansion for the game of Scarface 1920. Now Scarface 1920 is a one to four player area control and deck building game, which has a little bit of a bite. In this game, players are gonna take control of one of the famous mobs during the 1920s height of prohibition. Their eventual goal is to take over all of the criminal underworld. What Bloody Business does is add in some new unique mechanics where players can take over and control the government by controlling the elections for the next mayor, by having extra challenges from the G-men stepping in, and the most important thing, by two new gangs entering the fray. In this video, we're going to talk about one of those gangs. We're going to go ahead and talk about Rocco and Bessie and the Golden Oaks. Now, each one of these gangs add in some unique gameplay mechanics, some unique ways they play the game, and they're going to change things up quite a bit. Now, in this video, we're specifically going to talk about the one specific gang. If you want to actually learn how do we can incorporate all the extra rules, including the G-Men, the street gangs, and all these extra mechanics, I'm going to have another video in this series where I'm actually just talking about the new mechanics that come with bloody business itself. So that's enough of the chit chat. Let's go ahead and talk about the very first gang, the Golden Oaks. Now, the Golden Oaks are a gang that modifies things in a very unique way, and they're probably one of the most unique gangs that are actually in the game right now because they do a couple different things. One, they come with their own special board that allows them to start shipping whiskey across all of Chicago in the 1920s. They also are the first gang that has two bosses, which means they also have two boss cards. They're also the first gang that has to start on a specific section of the board every time that specific section of the board has to be set with a specific neighborhood. So let's go ahead and break things down. Let's go ahead and start with the setup so you can see all the unique mechanics that comes in with the Golden Oaks. Now the Golden Oaks, just like most of the gangs in the game, do have most of the standard stuff that we get for most of our gangs. They're gonna start off with the standard $10. They're gonna start off with the three standard jobs, but the very first thing we need to do whenever there's somebody controlling the Golden Oaks is we need to make a modification for the board. After we set up the board in our standard way that we've set up the game as according to the standard rules, we're gonna go ahead and look at the north side section of the board and we're gonna look at the neighborhood that's currently there. If there's a neighborhood there that has a three alcohol and a zero guns, we're fine. If that's not the case, we need to find one of those neighborhoods that has three alcohol and zero guns, and that's gonna replace the current neighborhood that happens to be that section. Whatever business is currently on top of that old neighborhood is now gonna be placed on top of the newer neighborhood. So we don't make any changes on the business. We're literally just changing the neighborhood only. Whatever neighborhood was there before, we're gonna go ahead and remove that from the game like we would with a standard neighborhood. Making sure again, the north side always has three alcohol, zero guns, and the 14 sale value neighborhood placed in that specific district. After that, we need to make sure we place our business marker there. Now the business marker is a unique thing that comes with the bloody business expansion. If you wanna know exactly how that changes things up, we'll check up another video where I'm talking about the actual expansion itself. Let's just focus on the gang in this video right here. And speaking of the gang, let's go ahead and look at our gang board for Rocky and Bessie, the Golden Oaks, because you're gonna notice a couple major changes here. First thing you're gonna know is that we don't have a dealer's upgrade skill, we have a liquor supply. I'll explain how that works in just a moment. You're also gonna notice that we actually have two gang bosses on our board right here. Every one of these gang bosses has their own unique track, and this is very, very important, because each one of these gang bosses has their own boss card that's gonna be in your hand of cards that you're gonna have as you're playing the game. So unlike the standard game where every player has one boss card, that one boss card has a specific stats represented by their specific gang, the Golden Oaks actually has two boss cards, and every boss card has the basic stats based on where that individual boss figure has arrived on the track. So for example, if we are playing the game and we happen to be leveling up Bessie, and we get Bessie all the way to level right here, she's still gonna be at a 1-1, not a big deal, but if we get her up to the 
this spot right here, we now see that she's a one, two. So if we play the Bessie card, she's in worth one, two. While if we play the Rocco card, he's still at a one, one. Because we need to make sure that we're leveling up those specific cards in a specific way. And like I said, they have their own individual card. So here's the boss card for Rocco himself. And again, if I played that card, one, one. And in this case, if I played Bessie, that would be a one, two. And if my hand of cards was actually playing both of those boss cards, I would have a total of two muscle and a total of three influence as an example. That's a very important thing to understand about how they play. Additionally, the other big change to the game is when you're playing these boss cards, unlike the standard gangs, you don't get access to three skills. Every one of these boss cards has access to only two skills among the skills that are available to them. So we have a little bit less skills available, three instead of four, and we're gonna choose less per boss card, two instead of three. It's a big change and it does modify the mechanics, but it can be very interesting and create some really cool mechanics and combinations when you have both of those cards in your plan on the same action turn. Now returning to the setup, the next big mechanic that we have to have when we have the Golden Oaks is whenever there is a Golden Oaks player in the game, not only do we have to set the north side section of the districts with that specific neighborhood, but they are actually going to place their gang down first. Now in the normal game rules, remember it's the last person in play order gets to pick their neighborhood first. Well, we're gonna have a slight little interruption to that specific section of the rules because the Golden Oaks player always starts in the north side. They have no choice. They're gonna take that section of the board immediately before any other player gets their, their choice of the neighborhoods. And we're simply gonna make sure that we put our angry boss miniature out on the board. Again, that comes with the expansion. Check out the other video explaining exactly how that works. Initially, like normal, we're gonna place out our control marker and we'll place out a truck or a car just like we would in the standard rules. And of course, like I said earlier, don't forget you're still gonna get your three boss cards and your $10 that all starting gangs get. But now we come to the next big change for the Golden Oaks. In the standard rules, every single player starts with two dealer cards. They'd start with a gun supplier and they start with an alcohol supplier. Well, the big change here is that the Golden Oaks are actually gonna start with only one of those. They're only gonna start with the alcohol supplier and adding on a little bit even more on top of that, they don't get a choice between a gun or an alcohol barrel. They get one alcohol barrel only and that one dealer card only. Understand that the Golden Oaks, like I showed you on their player board earlier, does not have the dealer supply skill available to them. They have the liquor supply skill. So they don't even have the option that comes with that nice benefit. So that's going to modify and change the way that you're playing as the Golden Oaks player. And now we come to the other major mechanic for the Golden Oaks, which is going to be the liquor board. Now the liquor board is going to start up, just set up just like this with seven cases of whiskey on it. And basically, like I said, this is going to be associated with the liquor supply ability. So just to jump ahead a little bit, not to explain the board, but to explain how the skilling leveling up itself works, you start with seven cases of whiskey here, and every time you take a skill up and decide to level up your liquor level supply on your skill board, you're gonna add five cases of whiskey onto your player board on the top section of the board right here. And again, you get to do this two times. So if you level up one of your bosses or a combination of your bosses two times and decide to apply both those level ups to your liquor supply, you're gonna end up with a total of 17 cases of whiskey. And this is really important because this is the major mechanic, this is the fun, this is the meat and potatoes that the Rocco Bessie and the Golden Oaks bring to the game. Because this board right here is gonna add a whole bunch of changes, extra mechanics, and add extra skills and abilities that are gonna be very unique to the Golden Oaks player. Because what this is, is this is an actual action space that's available to the Golden Oaks player only. In their standard game of Scarface 1920, every player has access to 15 different actions. You have your underworld actions, you have your authorities actions, then you have the five other actions that allow you to do various different actions across the board. Well, the Golden Oaks player has one skill, one order, one option that's available to him by interacting with this board. So when you're deciding to take your order and carrying out your orders on your turn, instead of taking one of the 15 standard actions, you're simply gonna take one of your thugs and send them to the top of the board right here. That is your action, that's your order for your turn. Once you have done that, you're gonna take a certain amount of cases of whiskey based on how much muscle you manage to generate, and you're gonna take those cases of whiskey and put them out in any of the districts on the board. So let's just say, for example, you played out two bodyguards on your turn and that was to form your action plan for this turn. That would allow you to create two muscle on your turn. Since we've created two muscle, let's say we're gonna take one of our thugs and we're gonna place them on our liquor board. Again, that's our only action for our turn. It's not an additional action. It takes place as our action for the turn. Since I produce two muscle right now, I can take up to two cases of whiskey, place them in any districts on the board. Just for fun, just to show you how this works, I'm gonna put out two cases of whiskey just like this. Now the cool thing about this is you can actually take this action multiple times on your turn as your action. Again, you can only do it once because you only get one action per turn. But when your turn comes back around, you do have the option again to take one of your thugs, place them out there, place some cards as your 
action plan this turn, however much muscle you manage to create in your turn, take that many cases of whiskey and place them out there on the board again. And you can continue to do this as your action or take the normal actions available to all the players. The cool thing about this is when you do your reorganization phase, you're going to pull back all of your thugs that are placed on this worker board location and then they're going to be available. They're going to go back into your headquarters, available for future actions after you do your reorganization. And again, this space can have an unlimited, look at the max amount of components in the game, amount of thugs, and an unlimited amount of whiskey cases. Again, 17, because that's the max amount in the game. Those maximum amounts of those pieces on the top section of the board here. So this creates a really cool mechanic. But what exactly does this do, and why is this so cool? Well, this is so darn cool, because when you make your sales, you're gonna start selling these cases of whiskey. Every time you make a sale in a neighborhood, let's say for example that we decide to make a sale in this neighborhood as our action, so we would send a, as our action for our turn, we would place out our cards and then we decide to make a sale in a specific neighborhood. Again, that's our action for this turn. Let's say we pick this neighborhood to make that sale in, we would take the three barrels of alcohol, which requires make the sale, and then we get the $14 there. Then we can sell as many of these cases in this specific district that we had out on the board and we're gonna get a certain amount of money for it. Once we've gotten a certain amount of money, and this is the cool thing, I'll backtrack to the amount of money in just a second, we can take one and a total maximum amount of one among all the cases. So if I sold 17 cases, I can take one of those cases of alcohol and the other 16 are gonna go back into my supply. In this example, I'm only gonna sell two cases of alcohol. So one of them is gonna go back to my supply and the other one's going to go onto my board. Now I've unlocked a new power. Now I've unlocked a new ability. And as we continue to do this and continue to add cases onto this liquor truck, not only are the cases going to increase in value from three all the way up to seven, meaning that if I sell, I don't know, five cases for seven bucks a piece, that's 35 bucks if I manage to get those cases out there very, very quickly and plan my moves that way. But you're also gonna see that we get extra skills and extra powers. For example, we may get plus one to our lawyer value. We may get to add plus two to each of your business markers profits. So you see how this can all start snowballing if you plan your strategies around the specific liquor board. This liquor board is very powerful. It's a unique power to the Golden Oaks that nobody else has access to as a power you can abuse to make lots of money. But now we get to the big, big negative of the Golden Oaks, and this is where the other players need to capitalize on to prevent the Golden Oaks player from taking the lead. Because during your reorganization phase, unlike the rest of the players who can make sales out on their various neighborhoods, the Golden Oaks player is forbidden to make sales during the reorganization phase. They can't do it. It's not allowed. They don't have access to the power. They can whine, they can complain, they can you know pout as much as they want, but during your reorganization phase, you don't get those free sales that the other gangs are allowed to make. So you need to balance, capitalize, and as efficiently as possible, abuse the sales of these cases of whiskey, level up your skill as quickly as possible, making sure those cases are gonna be worth the most amount of money to help ensure your victory in Scarface 1920 bloody business. Now this has just been a quick overview video of exactly what the Golden Oaks gang does bring to the game of Scarface 1920. This is a very unique gang that brings in a very special power and modifies the rules of the game in a very unique way. This game can be still be used in the solo rules versus the AI. It can be used in the game to play up to four players. And don't forget there are rules in bloody business. I haven't had a chance to see them yet, but I've been rest assured that they're gonna look really, really cool that are gonna allow you to play this game up to six players, which I am so greatly looking forward to. The ability to play this game up to six players is so darn awesome, and I'm just basically chomping at the bit at my opportunity to get this game to the table with five of my great friends sitting down and playing the game of Scarface 1920. Hope you enjoyed this video looking at Scarface 1920 and the expansion of Bloody Business and the gangs that come with it itself. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the YouTube comments down below. I'll be sure to answer them as quickly as I can. You can also feel free to email me off the show board game reviews. That is otsbgr at gmail.com. I do my best to answer those emails as quick as I can. You enjoy the content, you enjoy the videos I put out there, think about supporting the channel on Patreon. Just one dollar in a tip jar is a great way to say thanks. Remember this channel is 100% sponsor free. I'm not paid to bring this content out to you. I bring this content out to you because I enjoy the hobby and I enjoy the games. I was very fortunate to be contacted by Red Zen who asked me if I would like to do a video series because they enjoyed my original video series so much. I'm not paid for this, I just did it because I really do enjoy the game and I think Red Zen has created a fantastic area control, deck building style game with teeth and I really enjoy the game greatly. So I was very, very happy to make this series of videos. So just toss one dollar tip jar is a great way to say thanks, but you don't even have to do that. Two seconds and two mouse clicks. Click that like button, click that subscribe button. It tells YouTube that this is a channel that other people should be watching and it helps those YouTube analytics be in my favor. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and check out the other videos in the series, checking out the videos of how to check out the other gang, 
the new mechanics, and also a video in the series that's going to show some gameplay between these two new gangs bringing out the bloody business.